Greetings, my name is Spencer from 812-112 Management Group and today I want to talk about a topic about how you think and how your approach is to business. Uh, being in the hair care industry and what I want to talk about is the hair care industry specific uh, because we have a lot of people coming into the industry and so they get out of school and they say that I want to open up a business. Now, but I want to actually address that because a lot of times when people come to me and ask questions about the business aspect of it, so the first thing I tell them is go read the cash flow quadrant. And the reason why I ask them to read the cash flow quadrant because I really want to get an understanding with the client that's asking me the questions about wanting to go into business. I really want you to see yourself. Where, where are you in business or how do you think your approach to earning income? So we, we will identify where you are in this whole equation. So when we read the book, The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert T. Kiyosaki, it talks about the cash flow quadrant and it talks about four people in this quadrant. Now, in this quadrant, we have the employee, we have the self-employed person, we have the business owner, and we have the investor. Now, when we talk about the employee, the self-employed person, or the business owner, or the investor, I've noticed over my 12 years of being in the industry and 12 years doing business, I have this saying that I'm always considering who's doing the talking. And, and so when we're talking about consulting and who's doing the talking, I'm always understanding who's talking to me and who am I talking to in regards to business. Now, what the cash flow quadrant talks about when you approach, uh, let's just say uh, you hear a person that's coming from the employee standpoint, they'll always say, I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a job. So when, when, when me as a consultant, if you're looking for a job, the best thing uh, that I can do is refer you to a job position. Now, the next person that may come to me may be a self-employed person. They're coming out of a job and going into a self-employed uh, position. So you may find these self-employed people that may be uh, independent contractors. Uh, they have a DBA or they're just a one-man show. So a self-employed person, um, they will say that um, my services are X amount of dollars an hour. X amount of dollars an hour, this is what I charge. But still, what I've come to find out, even in the self-employed equation, that you still have created yourself a job. Now, on this side of the quadrant, the E and the S, what I found out is all about self. It's all about self. Now, when talking to a person or when a person is talking to me, I'm listening to... Uh, to, the, to their words and if their words is all about self. So when we're talking about self is I'm, I'm looking for a job or I want to run my own business. Now, when you say you want to run your own business, I should hear a different level of vocabulary. Now, each one of these quadrants have its own uh, language, its own vocabulary, so you want to learn the vocabulary about where you're going or what it is that you want. Now. But one thing that when, when I went through this transformation from employee to self-employed to the right side of the quadrant, now I had to take on a different level of skill sets because over here, remember, we're talking about self. But over on the right side, it talks about team. Now, when we're talking about team, I no longer think about self. The business owner is thinking about who can I hire to put in this position to run my company. So when you're talking about a business owner, again, the business owner is asking questions, who can I hire to put in position to manage my company? Now, that's a team conversation. That means you have listening skills, you have people skills, you have team building skills. Everything about the right side of the quadrant is about team. It's about we, it's about us. Now. As I shifted from the business owner standpoint, I began to realize that I had to sell my business to raise capital. Now, I began to, I couldn't talk like an employee, I couldn't think like a self-employed person, I had to think like a business owner, but I had to talk to a totally different person. Now the investor is a totally different person. 
be it woman, man, group, financial institution. Now, what I'm finding out about the investor group, that can be a financial institution or whatever it, whatever it may be. Now, what I'm having to do is learn a different skill set. Now, I'm having to sell my business to the investor. Now, most investors, I've ran across a lot of them. Bottom line is, um, what's the rate of return? Bottom line, they want to know what's the rate of return. It's, look, dude, um, Spence, what's in it for me? Now, that may be uh, somewhat selfish, but the, you got to understand they are a, an investor. So, when we're talking to the investor, the investor has a totally different language. Now, what I've come to find out in this whole series of, of, of learning about the cash flow quadrant from the employee, self-employed, business owner, investor, when you get here in the self-employed characteristic, uh, the, the, the self-employed quadrant, the self-employed quadrant has a, a hard time moving to the right side. It's, it's really difficult because everything you've done in the self-employed has been all about you. You're a one-man show. So when, when, when we're talking about opening up a salon uh, and moving from that self-employed, here's the major challenge for a self-employed barber, stylist, and you're moving to that right side. Now you have to put a business plan together to sell what you do. You'll hear words like, I need a scalable business model. Meaning that can you quantify what you do and can you duplicate yourself on a larger scale? That may mean that uh, you may have a, a, a great skill set, but we need you to duplicate yourself 24 times before the investor gets involved. Now you're like saying, well, wow, I never did take notes on you know, what it is I do. I'm just good at what it is that I do. Well. What you're finding is you're saying that, well, I can't raise capital because a lot of times the investor will not tell you that I don't want to invest in you. I want to invest in your business model. Now, again, the investor is concerned about the rate of return. Okay, if I'm going to invest in you, if I'm going to put $150,000 in you or I don't want to put it in you, I want to put it in your business model. Okay, so what we have here, we have the the the. The left side of the quadrant, all about self, all about self. I'm not knocking that. I've been there, but I, I realized that my mind has shifted to where now I'm not building a business for me to work in it. I'm building a business to either manage it, and now it's all about the cash flow. Notice that word. It's all about the cash flow. What What is the cash flow? What is the, the assets, liabilities, expenses? Those are words of a business. Okay, so now what we're talking about is the cash flow quadrant, employee, self-employed, business owner, investor. Again, remember the left side of the quadrant deals with self. The right side deals with team. Now you can make a decision what side you want to be on. If you're looking for a job, hey, fine, look for a job. If you want to start your own business, what we're calling a business, self-employed, self, that means you're doing the work, technical from a cosmetologist or a barber, that's still meaning you. But if you're going to build a business, a business consists of a team of people. An investor consists of a team of people. So I wanted to actually bring that to the forefront because, uh, again, I, I don't want you to go out Ill, Ill, Ill prepared for what it is that you're trying to do, who you're trying to talk to, and know who's doing the talking. That's another session with Spencer from 812-112 Management Group.